by a customer to make a video that would show them how they could replace the lamps that light up the dial on a new tone IMA 406. This is a unit that came out of another customer's home. It will need dial lights and we're going to rebuild it anyway, so it's a good chance to show you how to do this. It's best to remove the 406 completely from the wall installation to do this. It's not really a proper type of task to do while the thing is balanced on the hinges hanging out of the wall. Uh, we do have a video on our YouTube channel that shows how to remove the 406 master station, so you should watch that video first, and once you have it removed, then you can follow the steps in this one. So I have it just here on the workbench. The very first thing that we have to do is get the proper tools. So you don't need too much. You need a Phillips screwdriver. If you have a quarter inch nut driver, that will make it easier. If you don't have a quarter inch nut driver, you can use a thin blade standard screwdriver as well. But you'll need at least the Phillips and the fl small flat blade or the, or the nut driver. The first step, once you have it on the workbench, is you have to remove the knobs. And these simply pull off. You'll notice that the knob for the volume control has an index mark on it so you know how far it's turned up as compared to the knob from the tuner side which has no marking because you're just rotating it around and around to set the radio station. So once you've taken the knobs off, let's turn it over and look at the back. So here we're looking at the back of the 406 master station and just as a brief overview, we have the AM FM tuner, we have the talk listen module, this is this board at the bottom is the amplifier, power supply, and intercom control board. Of course, we have the speaker, a volume control, and some switches on this side. The basic steps here is we're going to remove the chassis from the faceplate. The chassis is one complete assembly. Once we remove the chassis from the faceplate, the only thing that will be left on the back of the faceplate will be the speaker. So the chassis is held in place with screws around its perimeter. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and down here with the big washer under it is nine. Uh, things to be cautious of. This screw and this screw go through the amplifier circuit board. If you don't take these screws out and you go to pull the chassis out of the faceplate, you could possibly break the corners off the circuit board and that's going to create a real problem for you. So you don't want to do that. Uh, the very first step to do, what I like to do first, is let's take the screw out of the faceplate and get rid of the support strap because it seems like it's always in the way. The next step would be to unplug the wires from the speaker terminals. You'll notice that there's a red dot under the dust on right here on the speaker frame. Uh, on new tone systems, the red dot is always the black wire. Uh, or you could put a piece of tape on here and write red dot or something to identify it. Uh, since I already know that, I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to unplug these. On some production models, there won't be slip-on clips that fit onto the lugs of the speaker. These wires will be soldered onto the speaker. So, so that gives you two options. You can either desolder the wires from the speaker terminals or you can leave them soldered on. There's usually enough slack in the speaker wires that you can still flip the chassis over to do, to do the light bulbs without having to worry about the wires. Uh, in this case, it has a slip-on terminal, so that makes it easy for me. So the next step is to remove the chassis screws. Screw number three goes through a plastic strain relief that the low-voltage power wires and the ground wires uh, fit through. It's necessary to remove that one. Just work your way around removing one screw at a time. And lastly, the screw with the big washer. 
The reason it has a big washer is because the standoff, the screw goes in the standoff on the back of the plastic faceplate, which pushes down on the head of, on the washer, which pushes down on the chassis and holds it in place. Once you've taken out all the screws, you'll see that the chassis now is loose from the faceplate. So let's go ahead and flip it over and see what. So here we're looking at the front of the chassis. This is the light diffuser that you see through the radio dial on the faceplate panel. Here's the little AM FM tuning pointer. And if I turn the, sha the tuning shaft, it moves back and forth. It's best when you're going to be replacing lights to put this at one end or the other just to keep it out of the way. Uh, you don't want to bend this, uh, then it won't be straight in the dial. And also, if you bend it too much, you'll break it off. Don't ask me why I know that, but I do. So, the lights are in sockets behind the diffuser. There are three of them, and they're connected with these white wires. Uh, the way these lights are wired, they're wired in series, which means that if one light goes out, all lights go out. If one light becomes loose in the socket, all lights go out. It's not the best design in the world, but that's the way they made it. So usually if you have no dial lights, only one of the three will be out, but you should replace all three since you went all through all the trouble to take this apart to do this. So the first thing you have to do is remove the light diffuser. The light diffuser is held onto the chassis with one screw here and one screw here. This is where the quarter inch nut driver comes in handy. You can use a flat bladed screwdriver, but it's a little hard to get in there and get a good bite on the screw. So with the nut driver, it's often hard enough on its own because the screws are usually really tight for some reason. So we'll take this out and we'll take out this one. Now that we've done that, one thing to be careful of, this part of the metal bracket that holds the diffuser where you took the screw out is right next to the dial cord. The dial cord is what, when you turn the tuning shaft, it's what wraps around the tuning wheel and a variety of little pivot or, or turning points and moves the pointer back and forth. If you break the dial cord or cut the dial cord accidentally, you've got a real problem. Replacing dial cords is a complete pain in the neck. So here it takes, it pays to be a little bit cautious and lift this away from the dial cord as you take it out. All you simply have to do is lift the diffuser out of the way uh, and now you can see the three light bulbs. These little light bulbs, they're miniature lamps in a IM or IMA406, their miniature lamp number 259. Don't use any other number of miniature lamp. These are commonly available. You can buy them online nowadays. They'll cost you maybe a couple dollars a piece. Uh, these are what are called wedge bulbs. And wedge bulbs simply pull straight out of the socket. Sometimes the hardest part is trying to get a grip on it. And that one doesn't want to come out. So since they're wedged, uh, they might need a, I might need a little better help. So a small pair of needle nose pliers might work. And it's just really stuck in there. Let's try this one. Maybe we'll have a little more luck. There's that one came out. Let's try this one again. The hardest part of this is trying to get enough grip on the glass to pull them out. So we'll move the pointer out of the way and we'll do the last one. And here you can actually see on the ball, perhaps, it says GE259 because that's the miniature lamp number. And you can see on the bottom the glass is formed into sort of a wedge shape and it has the metal connections or the metal wires from the filaments bent over. Uh, these are not like automotive bulbs where they're bayonet mount, although I guess they don't use those in cars much anymore. Bayonet mount, you push it in and turn it to lock it. These, you simply, with the new lamps, you simply line it up with the socket 
and push it in. So once you've replaced all the lamps, again moving the pointer out of the way, and we'll put this one in. Put the diffuser back in place, making sure you don't cut the dial cord and that you get the pointer slide back on the metal part of the diffuser. Put the screws back in. The screw on the left is usually not too hard to do because it's right out in the open. And again, I like to use my little nut driver because it's easy. This one on this side is often a pain in the neck. Uh, it's kind of recessed down in there where it's hard to reach. And now sometimes having a magnetized screwdriver comes in handy. If you want to magnetize a screwdriver, I suggest you get one of these. This is a screwdriver magnetizer. It has a slot for magnetizing and another slot for demagnetizing. And all you have to do is insert your screwdriver and draw it through the magnetizing side a couple times. And surprisingly enough, you now have a magnetized screwdriver. So with a magnetized screwdriver, you can insert it in the hole and line it up. And then so I like to switch over to my nut driver and tighten it up. And that's all there is to changing the lights in an IMA 406. Once you get to this point, put the chassis back in the back of the faceplate, put all the perimeter screws back in, hook up the speakers, reinstall it back in the wall where it came out of, and you're good to go. As an added bonus, since you've gone through all the trouble to take the chassis out of the faceplate and all that's left in the faceplate is the speaker, now might be a good time to clean your faceplate. As you can see, we'll make a little smiley face here. Um, the inside of intercoms get really dirty. So it, at this point, it would be relatively simple. Remove the four screws to take the speaker cone out. Uh, you can use any kind of general purpose uh, cleaner. Spray cleaner works really well. I use an all orange citrus cleaner when I clean face plates because it won't harm the plastic or the finish on the plastic. You could simply spray the inside and the outside of the face plate. If you have an old toothbrush or a small bristle brush, you can sort of scrub it all just a little bit, rinse it off under some warm water, dry it off or let it dry, and then reassemble it and you'll have a very happy smiley face. Oh no, you won't because it won't be dirty anymore. So now's a good time. Wash your face plate, make your intercom better. If you like this video, please like it on our YouTube channel. If you think this video can help other people, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. It simply raises our rankings on YouTube. So when people search for new tone videos, they'll find ours and that way we can help them also. See you on the next one.